All right, everyone, I know technically I should be waiting till December at some point to do this, but I just can't help myself. And it's 11-11, so, you know, you get dubs twice, you, you get quads, uh, lucky day, so, eh, might as well do it now. Uh, anyway, it's time for the State of the Clank Address 2021, going through some of the statistics and shit, some of the numbers, what I had expected for this year, what actually happened. First, let me summarize by saying, by and large, things are way further ahead than I expected, so it's been a good year uh, overall, and again, there are several weeks left in November, plus all of December. Uh, I can sort of extrapolate the general direction, and it has actually improved recently, including on YouTube, and I will get into that. There will be, by the way, in the description of this video and as a pinned comment, a poll. Uh, related to whether I should get back on daily motion. Now, I'll do daily motion first, therefore. Um, I have the third largest creation channel on all of daily motion. I realize the platform has issues, so that's not as meaningful as it would be like, hey, I'm the third largest news creator on, on YouTube or something. Um, in the top 100 easily within the United States, and there are like 8,200 people following. And for some reason, even though I haven't posted there in months, there are still more subscribers over time. And numbers still rising. Still some views coming in, even though the videos aren't being posted anywhere. And the reason why I'm considering it is this. For those of you that don't know, I left Daily Motion because they started putting ads on all videos, which annoys me. Then I thought to myself, the no ad pledge that I took was that I wouldn't take ad money. If the platform itself is forcing ads, the best I can do is just tell people to use ad blocking software. And let's face it, if you're using Daily Motion, you're using a desktop. You can do that. I never see ads on the platform. How would it be any different from YouTube, which does the same thing? It's just that instead of in a blanket sense, it does it more in a targeted fashion. So on YouTube, you can just say fuck over and over again. The algorithm will ignore your video. They won't have ads on it usually. Daily motion, it's a little less sophisticated. But I was thinking to myself, I'm not being a hypocrite for using the platform on which I attained some degree of dominance, to tell the truth. Uh, and, and I am hyper competitive. I'm not really being a hypocrite or a sellout or anything because I'm not getting a penny of that ad revenue. It's just Daily Motion puts ads on some of the videos. It's the same as YouTube. So <laughs> I've, I'm thinking about rejoining the platform, and so my exclusives would be on another platform each day, with, with the exception of the book updates. And the problem is that Amazon Links and Daily Motion don't really get along together. Uh, in fact, they've scrubbed some of the old uploads as well since I've been off. You can tell because you see a sudden decline in viewership from where you used to have a video. It's, it's kind of funny. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll update Daily Motion first. Uh, definitely ahead on the platform, even though I abandoned it halfway through the year. Now to YouTube. Uh, I had expected hitting about 350 million views, and instead it's uh, approaching 356 million right now. So there has been a bit more viewership, actually, than I expected when, I, when the year began. Subs are a different story. We're well behind. I had expected to hit like 520,000. Of course, we're struggling to hit 488 at the moment. However, I will say this. Uh, despite that number being far behind expected... YouTube appears to have manipulated its algorithm within the last couple of weeks a little bit because it seems to have eased up. I have had notably fewer complaints about notifications. I've had notably fewer complaints about glitches. And even though YouTube is now poised to remove the dislike button, which I think is, is terrible for the platform, growth is beginning again. Uh, it's possible to hit 490 by the end of the year uh, at, at this current rate, which I, I expected... Halfway through the year, because of the algorithmic change, I expected that over the year I might lose subscribers on YouTube. Instead, you know, there's been a gain of multiple thousands. It's, it's not nearly the growth it should be in a fair fight, you know, if I wasn't behind all the priority creators. But at least people that are already following me are getting notified now, therefore they can share the videos out, and there is growth, even if it's coming mainly from other platforms technically. So little bit of an update. Do I expect to be banned off of YouTube? People talk about that because YouTube is becoming more purge, uh, happy, and censorious. No. I expect they'll just continue to dogpile me with algorithms. But as we see under the current algorithms, as long as people are being notified, the channel will still grow. I would expect maybe to hit a half a million by the end of next year, which is sluggish growth. But hey, it's better than a lot of creators are getting. Something like 90% of the old wave commentators are losing subs right now or they're completely dead in the water. I guess I should count Mike Lucky Stars. Now, on BitChute. Viewership and subs, again, totally different stories. The viewership I expected to get to like 
maybe 40 million views, but I was cautious and said maybe 35 million is more uh, the real number. It's already at 43 million. Um, so clank, 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 well ahead. Subs, again, a different story. I had expected 150,000. It's just shy of 142 right now. It's not massively far behind, but the growth did slow down, although the engagement actually rose over time. Um, having more engagement as a ratio of subscribers is actually a good thing <laughs> because it shows that there's more vibrancy, there's more actual usage there, as opposed to a platform where you might have 100,000 subscribers and get 10 views. Well, you got a lot of people following your content. Nobody wants to watch it. That's the opposite with regards to BitChu. On Rumble, I don't know exactly how many views that I have because their analytics rarely load. By the way, Rumble, please take care of that. Uh, but hit 42,000 subscribers the other day. So another clank victory. I had expected 30,000. But then Trump got on the platform and a bunch of other people got on the platform and, and the platform merged you know, in locals and growth increased there and it trickled down to me certainly in a fairly big way. So uh, for, for you know, only a year's effort actually really using the platform, that's pretty good growth. Even if you are counting the fact that I'm advertising it every day on YouTube and other platforms, Still, that's, that's pretty high. There are a lot of people who on much larger platforms don't get, any, uh, get anywhere near that. Onwards to Odyssey. I didn't really have uh, any expectation for views. I, I hadn't really guessed it as much because at the beginning of the year, I was much smaller on Odyssey. And I'm like, well, I don't know exactly how much it will expand as the audience expands. But I've got almost 2.4 million views on the content there now and 56,000 subscribers. Uh, again... I had expected to hit 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. In fact, I don't even know that I expected that. I think it was 45. <laughs> so, yes, uh, considerably higher growth there. Um, for views, next year I'll be able to make like an expectation. In January at some point I'll make like a year-end expectation video. I did it last year. I think I did it the year before. I just find this funny. So this is the extra video of the day. We already went over daily motion. Now on mines, uh, 52,000 people again subscribing to the material. Uh, this is roughly on par with what I had expected. Yeah, mines, uh, the, the thing is, the, the engagement on the site over time had declined for a while. It's picking up definitely now, but the growth, the average growth was conceivably lower. Uh, but for viewership, 29 million people have watched or looked at the content that I've posted on the site. Um, that's pretty good. That, that's quite a bit of It's more than you're going to get on Facebook, generally speaking. Yeah, I like Anomaly. He's mainly known on Facebook, I guess, which is hysterical. It's like, oh, my boomer audience. <laughs> They're throwing their granny panties up at me when I do the Trump rap song. Anyway, we'll get past that. It has nothing to do with this video. It's funny, though. Uh, then Substack, which I joined. Uh, and I haven't really made that many posts on there. I promise not to flood people's email, like their inbox. Like, mainly I'm a video creator. This is sort of a side project, but still 4,400 people are following the Substack. I'm thinking there are a lot of people that do journalism that don't have that kind of circulation that, and, and don't subscribe to the content. Um, I don't know that I had any expectations, but I know that that's higher than I would have expected. Because, most again, most of my work is video or it's books. It's not like journalistic blog-type snippets. I've done blogging before, but mainly it's relegated to my books blogs. It's basically just to summarize and, and share out and, and sell copies of uh, my literary works, you know, the, the edited works, the things that I write. So the fact that thousands of people would follow the material, uh, I think is pretty good because, you know, the kind of people that want to watch long-form rant videos like this versus the kind that want a terse blog article, there is some exclusivity there. There's overlap, but I think there's more exclusivity than that. And then finally mentioning literature to the paperback sales department uh, way above uh, expected I had expected by the end of the year to sell about 50,000 copies of paperback works yes by the way I sell a lot of books it's already at 53,000 right now and we're not even halfway through November it's going to be massively above expected as far as KDP sales I don't even bother to calculate them because it's a minuscule total compared to the paperbacks and also over the course of this next year uh, not only am I 10 uh, copies ahead even for the next year, I had expected to get to 400 editions by the end of next year. I'm, I'm therefore 350 by the end of this year. I'm already at 360 and I've got five more works that are already done 
and I've got them on the back burner pending while I create new compilations. By the end of this year, I should be able to get out two more full-length compilations, one on Theosophy, one on European Paganism. Get those other five editions. I may even have time to do the hardcover uh, editions of my collected works. That is Demonology, Black Magic, etc. I'll be redoing Fruits of Eden. I'll be doing a hardcover eventually of that. Same with Sickness and Hell, Morbid Stories, a second volume of Morbid Stories. There's a shit ton of work to do. But I'm so far ahead because I worked at such a strenuous pace, and again, the paperback sales reflect this, uh, that everything is way ahead of ex uh, expectations. I would say the biggest victory of the year is the literature. It's not even video related, arguably. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a nice chunk of change that you get too, so then you can use that for, <laughs> and I need it, uh, better audio equipment at some point in the future. Um, more gardening stuff. By the way, I did some work out there. I'll do another garden update at some point. As a, one thing we fell behind in, on in the year, only did like three garden videos. When back in February, I should have done a winter garden video in Rutland. Oh, here's my, my icicle crops are coming up awfully well. I see the snowman patches uh, is doing just fine. Uh, yeah, a little, bit of, a little bit of fun. But definitely, there is a, a poll in the description. I may go back to popping up the exclusives on Daily Motion, barring, uh, like I said, n not the literary updates. Those won't go there because they don't work well with their copyright system. I don't know how I feel about that, but again, I'm, I'm reticent to continue not being on Daily Motion when I had such a huge head start, number one. It is a stable site, number two, and basically it's not doing anything YouTube's not doing. So it's like, you know, it spends a little bit more time per day, but there is a payoff, there is an organic audience there. You you decide for me. The, the poll will end in about 24 hours, or 22 actually, I think I said it to. So tomorrow, uh, and then I'll take a look at it, it'll just be basically majority rules. <laughs> because I don't have strong feelings. We'll see how you feel about it. I'm not taking any ad revenue if I get back on the platform, but there would be ads. That just means I can tell you to use ad blocker. That's my opinion. That's about all. Peace out.